Hello, Bashar. And a you good day. I have so many questions. So many questions? Yes. Are you sure that a lot of them aren't the same question in different clothing? No, I'm not sure. All right. Begin um, however you wish. Okay. Are there any extraterrestrials that don't have any questions or any beings? Like, do plants have questions? Yes, but not in the way that you understand that concept. It's a very different expression of consciousness, and it isn't really something that you can relate to in the way that you express it as a human. But everything is conscious. Everything is self-aware in one way, shape, or form, even though it may be a very alien form of self-awareness to you. But everything, in a sense, knows, if you want to call this a question, that it is being encouraged to be more of what it is. So it is always, in a sense, seeking. There is always mystery. There's always the opportunity to expand, to grow, to change, to express more of whatever it is. So if you want to say that that might be a series of questions, well, that's an analogy that can work, but it won't be exactly how those different life forms are experiencing it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So consciousness is similar to a state of questioning? or Well, in a sense, consciousness is self-awareness. It is the first reflection of all that is of itself, so it knows it is itself. So self-awareness is consciousness. And therefore, it constantly expands as the reflections in a hall of mirrors continue to expand to infinity. So everything is in that state of self-reflectivity and self-expansion. Yes. Okay. Now, the structure never changes. The structure never grows. The hall of mirrors is the hall of mirrors. But the perspectives, the angles, the experiences constantly change, and that's how creation expands. But the structure of it never does. Okay. Does that make sense? Kind of, yes. Kind of, all right, good enough. I'll have to listen to it again later. If you say so. <laughs> um, I have a question about the physical body. Yes. And how um, negative beliefs affect it. Well, I think you all have some experience with that, don't you? The first level would be called stress. The next level would be called disease. The next level would be called death. Where did the first negative belief come from? In the moment of the creation of existence itself, if you want to put it poetically or linearly, remember that once all that is was self-aware and became aware it is everything, then it is both positive and negative. Everything has positive and negative except the one, which is homogenous and unaware of itself. But as soon as it became aware of itself, there is the trinity. Positive, negative, the balance point in the center. So the idea of negative beliefs are inherent in the structure of existence itself. Make sense? Yes. How do we love ourselves if... We are one. We are just, we don't have something to... How do you love yourself? Yeah. I mean, what is it that's loving ourselves? You. You. We and can. all that is. Remember, it's this and that, not this or that. Okay. You have to understand that both sides, cause and effect, are actually one experience. One doesn't actually come before the other. Both are there simultaneously. So one reinforces the other. And from your linear perspective, sometimes it can seem as if one began before the other, but that's not actually mechanically the case. So all that is is loving you unconditionally and allowing you as an aspect of all that is to also love yourself unconditionally. Yes? Yes. So it's all that is loving itself in all the ways it can. Does that make sense? Yes. 